What was the most damaging thing a parent said to you when you were growing up? And my little brother had been naughty, nothing special, just regular kids naughty. We had an older brother and sister, they were twins. Mum took us into the bedroom to punish us. We didn't plan to have you, you were accidents. We chose to have your older brother and sister, you were accidents. Me, about 8 or 9, that's terrible, you can't say that to kids. I will remember this when I grow up. My brother, 7, cries. Mum shuts up fast. 30 years later the subject came up and she denies it ever happened. Except my younger brother also still remembers it. Two accidents? Fool me once shame on you. Fool me twice shame on me. Fool me three times. You're becoming that guy. You know. The one. Kindle Unlimited. The freedom to explore over one million titles and thousands of audiobooks. Enjoy unlimited reading and unlimited listening on any device for just $9.99 a month. Try it free for 30 days. I told my mom I was depressed when I was 17. She told me getting over depression was easy because she got over her postpartum depression and that I shouldn't be weak like my uncle. That particular uncle committed suicide as a teenager. Duck. My mom got really drunk on my 16th birthday, got really upset that no one was paying attention to her, and then started screaming at me and telling me she hated me. She tried to throw something at me but she was too drunk and missed. This sounds exactly like my 16th birthday, except swap the drinks for drugs. My mother was constantly doing stuff like that whenever she was high. She told me one year that she wished I had successfully committed suicide after I disclosed to her that I had tried. I feel your pain. You definitely aren't alone. My mother locked me out of the house and told me to never come back after I told her boyfriend of a week to get away from my dog. Bastard kept hitting my dog, took my dog and fled to my dad's. I was 12 at the time. My mom's boyfriend took a ducking camera and put it under the bathroom door as I was getting in the shower. I know it was on because the light was on. I was like maybe 12, 13. I flipped out. My mom told me to stop being so rude to her boyfriend because it was just a joke. Shame on me, right? My mom said her husband, my stepfather, wasn't that kind of man when I told her he sexually violated me. It only happened the once, thankfully. But that betrayal has stayed with me forever. I was 9 at the time. After years of abuse from my mother, my dad finally divorced her and in the years my sister and I lived with him afterwards. He often told us he wanted to kill himself, usually before he got drunk every night. This was high school. Edit. I read half of these and realized most people posting want to share their story because it's ducked up. We were treated terrible and as young people, definitely didn't deserve it. We are more than our past, so let's move forward from it and hold our head up. You won't become like them to your family later. It wasn't illegal you'd be spending the night with my buddies. At least then I'd be getting something, implying the money from pimping me out, out of raising you. I was 11. What a duck up they were. Don't believe that shit face. Then and now okay OP? Duck up is the best word for them. He was a narcissistic abusive a-hole who drank himself to death. The only reason I kept you was so that when I had a kid I actually wanted, I'd have a built-in babysitter. This is the worst thing I've ever read. I am sorry nothing they actually said, but whenever I tried doing something new on my own that wasn't already expected of me, they just laughed it off. You want to exercise and eat healthy? Haha. <laughs> Don't be silly. You are not fat. I was. And then they maybe mentioned it at a dinner with family friends for some more sensible chuckle. There were many other things like that. And while I'm sure they meant no harm, this caused me to do stuff on my own or do it when I was more mature and I didn't care as much what people thought about me. Now, since I stopped telling them things, my parents know very little about me and we have almost nothing to talk about. The only person with whom I can talk to more than few minutes is my sister since we never had this problem. But I know what you mean. My family likes to do this a lot, and it's always so discouraging. Some people just need to realize that the jokes they make, in good faith or not, can harm. 
Based on the amount of posts here, this will most likely be buried. My mom, like the rest of my family, has severe depression. I've always known since I was young. But all I knew was that she had to take medication. And that she was sad sometimes. She would tell me what was wrong and I'd be there to cheer her up. I always felt like I was bearing the weight of all of her problems from the time I was old enough to understand them. Around 8 years old, I felt like it was my responsibility. We were always fairly poor. We never went hungry. But we also never had money. My mom was a single parent and worked her ass off to support us. And a few years later, my sister. When I started high school I moved to a new town because she had gotten a great job. She was making $40,000 a year Canadian. This was about 10 years ago now. And was in a serious relationship with a great guy who ran his own bricklaying business. And probably made about 60-80k a year. I didn't know at the time how much money we were making because it seemed like we were broke. The power got shut off now and then because they'd forget to pay the bills. Because of this I never asked for new clothes or anything really because I assumed we were still broke. A month or two later she talks to us about what happened around Christmas with her. And she said that she had no memory of anything that happened for a full week, just before she took time off work. And until a few days after she got out of the hospital, she doesn't remember showing us or saying anything to us, or even doing it. All I know is I'll remember that forever. It's burned into my memory. I'm sure it's the same for my sister. Not me, but a friend of mine grew up with an alcoholic mother who changed boyfriends quite frequently. One boyfriend in particular started to rape my friend at the age of 9 years old when her mum was passed out. It went on for a couple of months before my friend finally told someone. The cops came around to arrest him. Her mum lost her shit and started yelling at the cops, demanding an explanation. One of the officers straight up said because he rapes your child. That's why, in front of my friend, she then looked at her daughter, at her boyfriend and then back to the cop and asks why can't you just take her? I feel that the state should have taken the kid because of the comment. I think letting her child get raped for months should have disqualified her well before the comment. I was sexually abused by my older brother for several years as a child until he moved out and never told my family. I ended up actually forgetting it ever happened until 7th grade. I assume I repressed it. Well, I told a close friend and she took me to see a counselor who went to her church. Nothing ever happened with it. Fast forward to my sophomore year in high school. I was given 70 hours community service for truancy. And if you and a parent did this group therapy thing, it'd knock off 40 hours. The counselor who did it was the same counselor who I told about my brother, who, in turn, told my dad what happened. His response? That explains her grades. I cried about it for weeks. Edit. My mother was worse than my dad. And I want everyone to know I don't hold what my dad said against him. My mom is a shitty person in general who makes my distressed dad sound like parent of the year. When she found out, she cried for about 2 minutes, sucked it up, and then explained that her mother, herself, and I all were sexually abused by a family member and that we got over it and so should you. This just didn't hurt my feelings much because she was always rude. I told my mom the babysitter put his penis in my mouth. Shut the duck up. Don't spread lies about people. He made me talk on the phone while he went to a different phone in the house and pretended to be a doctor saying that this would make his tummy feel better. Even made my brother do it. 20 years later and she still won't believe it. But she's a self-centered bitch who had me way too early. When my brother and I moved out she went mentally backwards to relive her 20s and duck everything that walks. I also grew up with her and her mutually abusive boyfriend having bloody fights every week. Cops were at my house every single week for 7 ducking years. Duck my childhood. I told my mom the babysitter put his penis in my mouth. That's ducked up. Your stepmother is more important to me than you. 11 years old. Adults can really be selfish dongs. I was a kid my dad used to hit me. I had had to help him with his work constantly and when I did something wrong he would either mimic hitting and towering over me and if he'd gotten angry enough, just hit me. Anyways after a while I started flinching over every sudden movement he did near me. And sometimes it was so bad that I dropped something or literally injure myself by moving into something. 
he thought it was funny. He made jokes to other people about how you didn't have to even touch me to injure me. I'd do it to myself I was just a kid back then. It took me a couple of years to realize how wrong the whole situation was. The reason why I flinched was because I was afraid there was a slap or a punch or yes. Even a kick coming my way that was just the first thing of many that popped into my mind. What sucks is that I get these flashbacks of his actions and sayings sometimes. Some that my mind had suppressed and they just make me so angry. Direct quote would be something like this. You don't even have to hit him. He'll injure himself. My mom told me a lot. Why are you so weird? Why can't you be normal? I was an introverted kid who was in pain from her alcoholic father being a dunt and making home life miserable. We lived too far for me to leave the house to visit the town center or any friends. So I was trapped in my own hell for years. Now I'm still weird. I have a chronic illness and I'm just an oddball. But I am at least happy. My mother regrets saying those things. She didn't know how hard it was on me. It was hard on her too. And I forgive her. She's grown a ton as a person. Too. And I respect the hell out of her for all she's done for my sis and me. We're very close now. 3. Oh I'm glad to see a happy ending here. I was am pretty weird myself and my mom and I used to be distant when I was younger but we've also grown up together. Now we're pretty close too. Tried my best to raise you so you wouldn't be like your father. My father shot and killed himself and my brother. As well as shooting me and causing me to go blind. He was also expected to be a narcissist. Mom and dad are divorced. I love with mom. I'm 15. Mom decides to move 500 miles away. Dad, over about 6 months, repeatedly tells me that by law I'm old enough to make my own decision about whether to go with her or stay with him. Tells me I'm man now, and he would respect my decision. Over and over and over, agonizing decision. I decide to go with mom. Haven't told him yet. He calls me one day and says he needs my decision today. Picks me up and takes me to TCBY. In the car he tells me again to not be scared. Either decision is okay. I'm a man now. And he will respect the decision. In tears. I tell him I'm leaving. He immediately reaches in the back seat and hands me an envelope. I open it and it is a summons for me to appear in court the day before we leave. Had to get up in court to say I wanted to go with my mom. Luckily the judge thought this was ridiculous. Took me and my dad's lawyer to his chambers. Yelled at the lawyer. Called him a disgusting person. Kicked him out of the room. And asked me what I wanted to do. I said go with my mom. He said cool. Walked out. Left the next day. Have had a hard time making adult decisions since that day in the car. I'm 40. I had a somewhat similar experience. My mother and her lawyer asked me who I wanted to live with when I was 7. And because she was the person in the room, and I didn't want to disappoint her, I said I wanted to live with her, even though I had a better relationship with my dad. A year later, my dad died alone, and his body wasn't discovered for days. Still haunts me that, if I had been asked in a more fair way, he might have had someone there to help him, and he might have lived definitely affected my ability to make difficult decisions dude this is not on you not even the slightest you would have been eight at the time he died you wouldn't either helped him and actually seeing him go would be far more traumatic don't imagine you have any responsibility towards this you're just like your father not a nice thing to say considering she divorced him and hated his guts especially to an 11 year old girl bawling in the bathroom Yup, same here. Every time we did something bad she'd threaten us with sending us to our dad's house. She's get on the phone to him with us in the room and say so you're saying you don't want to see the girls? And my dad could hear us crying. When we were out of favor with her, she would focus on our appearance and say you have your dad's nose. That's her. His surname. Nose. My sister and I grew up firmly believing that dad had tried to kill mum when they were married. My sister was in her late 20s before she'd even talked to him without a sneer on her face. Even thinking about what his life must have been like back then makes me cry. My mum was a crazy bitch who made us believe we were bad children. Him believe he was a bad father. He is the best man I know. And did her best to destroy any chance of a relationship. Then she accused him of sexually abusing me because I had run away to live with him. 
because I couldn't take her physical and mental abuse anymore. Oh yeah, and now, she accuses me of having abused her. She has been saying this to me since I was about 10 or 11. Directly said to me, but being 13. Coming home to my alcoholic mother's suicide note on the kitchen table, it essentially told my dad he should have married ex-woman who he cheated on her with years earlier, had some strange goodbyes and duck yous doled out in his direction. I had never run up that flight of stairs so fast, found her face down in bed, didn't think she was breathing, empty magnum bottles of wine strewn everywhere, after jostling her for a while she finally stirred and I knew she was alive. I told her unconscious drunk ass that I loved her to death and would be heartbroken if she did something stupid. I left, taking the note with me, never mentioned it to anyone in my family. My mom doesn't remember even writing it. Decades later, I still can't stomach the stench of cheap white wines, Rieslings, Chardonnays. I know exactly how you felt, alcoholic suicidal mother, except mine ended up drinking herself to death before 40. Did you ever feel like you were the parent and she was the child sometimes? Absolutely. I'm an amazing parent because I had to be one by age 9. I'm also a mediator between the others in my family because I was somehow elected to be that person. Whether I wanted to be or not, there's nothing romantic about calling the police and telling them the rough direction you last saw your shit-faced parent driving in, in the hope that they arrest her for a DUI and possibly sober her up but they never catch her in time. I find some sick humor in the fact that as a 20 year old I got a DUI, and she picked me up from jail, and then proceeded to hammer 4 bottles of wine that night. One of the few times she did not try to hide it, it was a free pass from judgment because of the trouble I had gotten into. To this day she tries to relate to me as someone who understands her plight, becoy of it, and it fills me with rage and resentment. I lost out on having a mommy. All I remember is fear, anger, and pity for a human that was supposed to keep me ignorant and safe from the world. Birthdays, graduations, Christmases. I was making sure she didn't celebrate to the point of dying, so that I never truly felt what one of those milestones should feel like. Best comment of the day. I never told my kids any of them were unplanned, but my youngest found out anyway. I never once called her a mistake, accident, or similar child destroying name. I called her an unexpected blessing. And when she came to me, when she found out she was unplanned I told her the following. You know how Christmas morning, she was born in December, you wake up you get the presents you ask for, and you get extra ones, just because people love you? You were an extra present God gave me, just because he loves me. It did wonders for her self esteem.